Hello there and welcome to VGC. My name's Chris Scullion and this is my hands-on preview of Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes on Nintendo Switch. I've played the first few hours of this game, um, so obviously a game of this scale um, I, I will, will take many, many, many hours to beat. So these are really just very early impressions so far, with a full review to come at the end of the month. Um, for those not aware of Three Hopes, it's a sort of part sequel, part spin-off. So it's technically a sequel to Fire Emblem Warriors, which was released in 2017, um, which was a Dynasty Warriors spin-off, which was kind of a mashup of a bunch of different Fire Emblem games. But this one is a direct spin-off of Fire Emblem Three Houses, which came out on the Switch in 2019. So it's basically a, a Dynasty Warriors type version of uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Um, I would love to tell you a lot about the plot, but um, this being a Fire Emblem game, the, the plot is extremely dense. Um, and given that I'm only a few hours in, there's still a lot of pieces being put together, um, even, even that far into the game. Um, so at this point the plot is still, I, I still can't even really tell where it fits into the, the Three Houses timeline, um, that, that's how that's kind of how early I am in it so far. Um, what I can tell you is that you play as a new character called Shez, who can be either male or female and you can change their name if you want. Um, and at the start of the game <coughs> Shez basically gets their backside kicked by an ashen demon who is actually Byleth, who's the hero in Fire Emblem Three Houses. In fact, if you if you changed Byleth's name when you played Three Houses, um, the game checks that save and offers that as a character's name in this game, which is kind of awkward if you do what I did and gave them your name because now they're the bad guy. Um, so I won't say much more than that in terms of plot because obviously the Fire Emblem games are really plot heavy and this one's no different. Despite being like a Musu... Uh, Dynasty Warriors type game instead of a turn based strategy game it's still really heavy on plot um, so I don't really want to spoil what little of it I've, I've played so far. One thing I should point out though is that really early in the game you're asked to pick uh, one of the three houses to join up with which in turn leads you down a completely different storyline so like in three houses this is basically three completely separate adventures in one um, and obviously it remains to be seen what that means at the end of the game, whether you get to play through the previous storylines or whether you have to start a new save, uh, that's not known yet. Um, once you get going, the combat is similar to the way it usually is in these kind of games. Omega Force, who's a developer, has been making these Dynasty Warriors games since the late 90s on the original PlayStation, and it's pretty much got it down to a fine art by now, so if you've played any of them, you should really know what to expect, on the battlefield at least. So there's lots of button bashing, at least early in, in the early stages of the game. Um, and there's lots of ridiculous combos where you're juggling hundreds of enemies in the air and stuff like that. The, the, to be fair, there is a bit more depth to it than it sounds like I'm giving it credit for. It's just that I'm, at this stage, only a few hours in, on the default difficulty, I haven't really felt the need yet to get stuck into the strategic side of things or, or concentrate on training my characters and selecting the right class of character to suit what enemies I'm fighting on stage, any of that sort of thing. Um, at this stage of the game I'm, I'm getting through it just by basically battering buttons. <laughs> um, outside of combat there's a lot of stuff you can do at your base camp. You can train characters so they can learn new classes, you can uh, build relationships with the characters in your army, you can even go on excursions with some of them and try to hold a conversation with them, it's a kind of really really light dating sim type thing. Um, with the reward being the chance to stare at them for a while, which is a bit iffy. Um, but like I say, I'm still quite early in the game, so it's far too early to make any sweeping judgments. Because usually big epic games like this look very different by the end. Like I'm, I'm still getting tutorials for new features popping up, um, even a few hours in. So it's clear that I still haven't really scratched the surface here. Um, that said, there are a couple of things I'm a wee bit iffy about at this point. The performance isn't perfect. Uh, for starters, it's, it's, it's perfectly playable, I've seen much worse on the Switch, but it feels like it's running with a kind of unlocked frame rate and it's not massively stable as a result. The, obviously there are other people who do a better job of really getting into the technical side of things and I'm sure 
uh, they, they'll be coming up with their own findings soon but just by kind of flipping through the footage that I, I've captured that you can see here it looks like it runs at about 40-ish FPS and it isn't consistent which means things can get a bit jerky at times it might have actually benefited from a 30 frames per second cap just to see if it make, made it a bit more stable um, some of the voice acting is a bit dodgy too but you'll already know if you played Three Houses um, the, the guy who played Casper it sounds like he's back doing Casper again and he's easily the worst of the bunch he's an immensely annoying character um, and I'd hoped I'd seen the back of him but he's, he's here again um, but these are all the only real kind of quibbles so far um, it's, it's far too early for me obviously to make any kind of definitive judgement on the game um, but so far it, it plays well enough um, on the in actual battles um, it's fast enough there is a nice kind of range of characters you can play as um, like I say there, it seems like there's three completely different stories depending on which house you, uh, you, you decide to join um, and, and yeah so far like I say the combat at this early stage can be quite basic and repetitive but I can already tell there's um, a lot of kind of advanced techniques coming up there's lots of kind of um, if you dodge at the right moment it slows the enemy down and obviously it's got the kind of weapon um, rock paper scissors type system that Fire Emblem games usually do um, so I'm sure as the game progresses and gets harder that'll come into play um, in, a, in a more uh, prominent way um, but so far so good um, those kind of quibbles aside um, the game's due out on June 24th and you can expect my full review nearer the time as I continue to play through it but until then thank you very much for watching please keep it VGC for all your uh, video game news and I'll catch you later Thanks guys, bye bye.